Ba -ba 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 Link's Awakening. This game is like half Zelda, half Mario. You got Goombas, Cheep Cheeps, Bloopas, Piranha Plants, uh, Ker Kirby. Uh, you know, all the classic Mario staples. Including jumping on stuff. Just in case you know absolutely nothing about this game, let me quick bring you up to speed. And I do mean quick. This game was originally on the Game Boy, now it's remade for Switch. Wow! That was quick. I don't think even Sonic the Hedgehog could go that fast. In fact, he's still going backwards to try and get his character remade in time for the movie. Mmm, this will age well. So with the full $60 price tag, what's new in this version to make you be like, Ooh, yeah, that's, that's good enough for me to pay full price for that. I mean, I enjoyed this game as a kid. I enjoyed Zelda, so of course I was going to get it. But would anybody else pay full price for it? Arguable. The game's pretty short. They basically didn't change anything for the overall story to make it any longer. So you're still getting what you got with the Game Boy game, but with some extra added stuff. So if you're looking for long gameplay, I would go with something else. Okay, that was a short review. Let's get into the meat and potatoes of the whole game. Saving is super easy in this one. You got a normal save and an auto save. The auto save is pretty good. In the original, you had to press A, B, start, select, and then save and quit. You couldn't save and continue like in the Oracle games that came immediately after. So that's a good thing. In the original, you had to rely on Crazy Tracy's medicine, heart pickups, and great fairies to heal. In this version, they bring back bottles! The only thing you can put in these bottles is fairies, but hey, what else do you need? The fairies don't heal you all the way, but they heal you most of the way. Hey, it's, it's good enough, yeah? So yeah, with the addition of these bottles means that there's side quests. Instead of just going around trying to get photos for that photo album that you could print out with the Game Boy printer way ahead of its time, but nobody uses that anymore. They completely retcon that in favor of the tile thing. We'll get to that in a minute. In this remake, they added a lot more warp spots that you can use your ocarina to warp to from anywhere on the map. And it lets you get back to the entrance of the dungeon. It even works in the dungeon creator to bring you back to the entrance for kind of like some fast travel. You like Super Mario Maker? Well, too bad. We got Super Zelda Maker here. And it's not as super as you think. You can't share the levels that you make online. Only through amiibos... And that's it. So if you want to share your level with a friend who isn't immediately next to you, you gotta put it on your amiibo three times, put it in a mailbox, mail it to your friend, and hopefully, hopefully they'll mail you your amiibo back, but they probably won't because those things are rarer than the fucking Dead Sea Scrolls. Unless you get it from Target. I got mine in like three days. This is crazy. So as you progress through the game, and you beat dungeons, you go and tell it to this old man in this cave, and he'll slap all the rooms you've been through, well, most of them, onto these little stone tablets. You can organize that however you want, there's challenges to complete which earn you bottles, pieces of heart, secret seashells, and money. It was kind of fun, me going back and forth with my bestest buddy, making levels and playing each other's levels, and uh, it, was, it was good. However, the downside to this is if we lived, f like, far apart, then we couldn't have done that, like, in any useful way. It was a completely missed opportunity, considering that they really need to sell that Nintendo Switch online. It hasn't been going well. They did add the SNES Classic stuff, but that's just not gonna, it's just not enough yet. Still getting that lag on Smash Brothers. However, I will admit that they did say that if this goes well and people do like the system, they could implement like a Super Mario Maker style Zelda Dungeon Maker, and I'm like super hyped for that, so fingers crossed. It, it's, it's an alright system, it's not perfect, you can't change where stairs go, that's annoying. But as a trial run, as something they just threw together and threw in the game, I think it, it, it's, it's, it's good. It, you know, it's it's a, it's a jumping off point. They did want to pad out the game's length, so to that end, they put in more pieces of heart and more secret seashells. Instead of having 20 to get the sword, now you've got 40, and a total of 50 shells can be found. For a certain amount, you get the seashell locator, which works like Bow Wow when you have him, and he's like, Woof, dig here, rough. The way that they implemented these seashells are interesting. Some of the seashells are pretty easy, like, Hey, there it is. And then other ones are like, Really? How was I supposed to figure that out? But you do, either through your own ingenuity, just trying stuff, or from a guide online. You find these shells and you're like, wow, this is, this is, this is pretty interesting. I'm glad that they put that in. Doesn't make the game that much longer, but it does pad it out just enough to maybe warrant a $40 price tag. But 60 is just like, but, but I've talked about this in another video, Switch prices. Uh, the original Link's Awakening was perfect for people who were forgetful because they'd remind you what an item did every time you picked it up. It was as bad as Skyward Sword. 
Oh, yes, thank you. I do know what a rupee is. I know what a slime is. I have 47 of them. At least they made the text skippable in this one. Now you can just mash text like you got other stuff to do, because you do. Another big, huge difference is that there are actually dedicated buttons for your sword, shield, power bracelet, and your boots. The running boots, not your normal boots. Those just work automatically. This might not sound like a huge thing, but it is a huge thing. You don't want to break up the action by going through a bunch of dumb menus to equip your sword or your shield over and over again and then swap back out. Or switch to the power bracelet every time you wanted to pick up a jar. I get it. Game Boy limitations, right? But the reason I bring this up is because I saw some posts on this game that were like, Oh boy, I hope they don't change too much. Don't you mess with the original. It's like, if you love the original so much, go and play that. Let us all have our updated controls. There are also a whole bunch of new pieces of heart. Some of them are just like sitting there like, oh, okay. But you can actually use pins on your map now to mark out the location of things that you see right now, but you can't necessarily get right now. That's a good feature. I learned this from my partner. You can use those in the dungeons to mark where staircases go. Level 8, holy moly, you need those pins. You didn't know that you needed them, but you do. Well, I didn't need those pins. <laughs> oh, cool. It's fun seeing you run around like a lost chicken when you're trying to figure out where to go. That's really fun for me. Are you being serious out here? I honestly don't know how we lived our entire lives without pins on the map. It seems like such a simple thing, but it's just, it's just fucking genius. How did we never think of this before? Or if we did, Great, why did Nintendo never think of it either? Hey, I see you with your hand up in the back, what do you want? Um, um, Breath of the Wild had pins in it. You bring up an interesting and valid point, probably. But you know what Breath of the Wild didn't have? Dungeons with staircases. This is what you came here, right? To listen to me ramble about pins for five minutes? They also introduced a hero mode right off the bat. Now I'm gonna give you a tip right now for hero mode. Your shield is OP. It blocks magic attacks. I did not expect that. But anything that shoots like a beam at you, boom, block that stuff. Your shield can even block the wispy guys. I don't think you could block them before, could you? I don't know. Use that shield to protect yourself so you don't die. And if you don't die, you can get the secret ending. You can still steal from the shop, but if you go back in, you're going to be severely disappointed because you're just going to die like you did in the original. Nothing new there. And if you do, you don't get the secret ending. There's tons of new stuff to buy, too. After you buy the bow, you're like, okay, that was the most expensive thing. No. There are chamber stones to buy. And it's not like you absolutely need them to beat the game. If you're going for 100% completion, though, you're going to need a lot of money. And most of it you're going to get from the dungeon creator. Uh, creator is a strong word. A uh, dungeon arranger. There you go. This isn't a huge thing, but some of the enemies have new attack patterns, like the sword and shield moblins. The regular moblins will throw spears at you in an efficient manner instead of just walking around aimlessly and randomly throwing them. And the bunnies still can't stand the battle of the windfish. Ooh, look at them explode. You thought you could spit out some hot jams. Look at that. They're, that's so hot, they're literally exploding. The graphics are adorable. If I was a teenage girl, I would fucking squee at these graphics. They look so cute. If Wind Waker was Toon Link, then this is Toy Link. I love it. I wouldn't mind seeing this style when Seasons and Ages get remade. And even Minish Cap, even though that one was kind of deviating from that style a little bit. They have the assets. Now all they need to do is remake all these games. Yeah, ha, ha, ha. All right, we talked about some good stuff. Let's talk about the bad stuff. You're like, what what, 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 what do they fuck up on? Well, some of the music sucks balls, and not in a fun way. I could describe it, but just listen to these two tracks, okay? Just two. Yikes, I feel like those bunnies whose ears got exploded. Other than that, the hitboxes are just a little bit off. If you're trying to smash a pot through this tiny little hole, oops, gets caught right on the corner there. If you're trying to throw that ball across the gap in the seventh dungeon, you know what I'm talking about, wrecking ball came in like a wreck. You flub it because of the stupid hitbox and down it goes. Now you gotta go bring it all the way over here and waste your time. These complaints are pretty minor in the overall scheme of things. That and the length of the game. I'll just say this, if you liked the original, you're gonna love this one because it's the same game with tons of polish. It's fun to look at, it's fun to explore and re-explore this world. The only not fun part is probably uh, trying to catch the blooper in the fishing minigame. Wait, what? 
What's happening here? I don't remember this. Oh my god, it's crazy monkey sex. Oh, I'm glad they censored it with all these dust clouds. Okay, good. A bridge fell from the sky to make it stop. And I got a stick. <laughs>